Con, tell us your name and um, how you are involved in uh, youth. Yeah, so my name is John Steinbrecher. I am a teacher in, in Princeton. I've been a middle school teacher for about 25 years. Been a coach also for about 20 years. Um, so I've had a lot of involvement, worked with youth ministry within the within the church. Um, so yeah, I, I've had a lot of interaction with youth. It's been exciting to watch things happen, I would imagine, over the years for you. Uh, is there anything that stands out in particular to you? You know, as a teacher and a coach, you always see culture that changes. You always see... You know how how students deal with things and how they how they interact with you and you know after COVID you know a lot of things have changed even as a result mm -hmm. of that you know students not and athletes not having many boundaries per se at home and now all of a sudden they come back and um, yeah boundaries are put back on them and it's kind of reteaching and and just being the example that that I can as a teacher and as a coach. Man, you've been teaching for 25 years, and so that's that's been a, that's a long time. So, yeah. how have you seen teenagers change? You know, actually, I was just talking to to a counselor today, and um, I'm going to be kind of frank with you. Like, yeah. I I think that I see a lot of, you know, post COVID, a lot of hardened hearts. And, mm -hmm. you know, as, as a teacher, as a coach, it's I want to kind of model what it looks like to soften that heart up a little bit and, you know, be able to show empathy towards other people. And um, I think that's kind of one of the one of the big challenges that I feel like we're seeing right now is just, you know, giving kids the opportunity to to have an experience where they actually have to show compassion on people. Um, it's easy for a coach or a teacher to stand up and tell them that what they need to do, you know, how they right. need to stop arts, but it's actually giving them the experience, um, I think, that is would be most powerful. So, well, let's back up a little bit. Uh, you're you're a teacher, but you teach junior high, right? I do. Middle school. Middle school students. Um, yeah. How has how have they changed? You know, I, and again, I mean, I, I would say it's similar. Um, you know, when COVID came around, um, I, you know, I remember teaching to blank screens. I remember oh, teaching wow. yep. to students, maybe playing the video game here and there as they're sitting in the class. Um, and again, I mean, it's no judgment on them. It's just more of like, that's what we had. And now it's it's restructuring, um, <clears throat> reminding them that as teachers, as coaches, we care about them as individuals. And we want to do what we can just to to reinforce what it looks like to, to be an amazing person. And always striving to become better at being us. So... As a coach, you get a lot of impact in the lives of students, athletes, don't you? I do. So I coach middle school basketball. I coach uh, eighth grade basketball, uh, boys basketball, which this season just ended tonight. And then I am a co-head coach for the Princeton varsity boys tennis team in the spring. So. And so you see a lot of things as you watch these athletes develop, change, and grow not only in their ability uh, on a court or um, in a classroom, but in life, right? Absolutely. You know, any opportunity as a coach, as a teacher, I take advantage of to use teachable moments uh, to have an impact on them, to, to speak life into them, to model in my own life, the example of, of what it looks like to to be just a quality individual in society now. And so as I coach, you know, whether it be basketball or tennis, um, very simply pull kids off to the side, you know, remind them um, of things that they can become better at or things that they need to fix in order to strive to be that best person they, they can. 
Now, Princeton is also has a, a breakfast club, don't they? Princeton does have a breakfast club. We we actually started that about a year ago. T tell our audience what a breakfast club is from your standpoint. Yeah, so breakfast club, there was a vision um, kind of taking after St. Michael. St. Michael uh, kind of was on the news and they had started there several years ago and that started in a home. And so we had several Minnesota residents uh, from various churches that uh, pulled together and they had the vision to start one in Princeton. And so we met as a group of individuals uh, from multiple churches and even lay people from the churches. And we just brainstormed. We we came up with an idea of, of meeting location of who we can get for speakers. Um, and basically a breakfast club is an opportunity for students to come in in the morning twice a month. They come in at seven o'clock. Uh, we actually have a, a volunteer chef that comes in and she does her magic with the food. And um, yeah, they come in, enjoy breakfast. And then we typically will either bring a speaker in or we have a video series that we kind of take them through as well. Um, and just a, a point of encouragement. Um, you know, we talk a lot about mental health and, and things like that. And this is just one additional piece as a community that we can can offer our students in Princeton uh, to to just be an encouragement to them from a faith standpoint. And so in a few weeks, I get I think I get the privilege of coming up and speaking to the Breakfast Club in Princeton. Is that right? Ab absolutely. Man, Dan, we are excited to have you up there. Um, We've had coaches, we've had uh, volunteers from our community come in and speak. We've had, we have a former teacher that's going to be coming in this next week that was a basketball coach. Um, he'll be coming in to speak. And so we try to change it up, get a variety from local as well as, you know, people that students don't really know, but we know that the speakers definitely will have a big impact on the youth. So Campus Ignite is about how or can we raise an awareness uh, among the people that listen to these, uh, these this time uh, on the radio and in our podcast, how can we raise that awareness to pray for, reach, mentor young people? So, John, how can we pray for you and people like you, teachers and coaches? You know, I, I think the big thing, you know, just with some ups and downs in the, in the teaching and coaching, you know, pray for energy. Uh, just pray that God will continue to give us the strength um, to and, and empower us uh, to to be the people that, that he has called us to be. Um, he's got huge plans. He's got huge plans for Princeton. He's got huge plans for Minnesota. I truly believe yep. that. And just to... Give us the strength, the vision, the boldness, the the confidence um, in, in what we're doing and, and believe and know that he's going to be with us throughout the whole entire thing. That's exciting. You know, one of the things we ask people to do is we ask people to pray. And so, yeah. John, I'm going to ask you to pray for schools. I'm going to ask you to pray for teachers and coaches. I'm going to ask you that God would raise up laborers. Because the harvest is plentiful, am I right? Absolutely. But the Bible says it's the workers that are few. So yep. we want to raise up and see God raise up people like they have in the breakfast clubs all over, all over Minnesota, starting to take place all over the country. And um, I just believe that God has some great things in store. And he's able to do exceedingly abundantly, immeasurably more than we could Amen. ever ask, think, dream, plan, or even imagine. But it starts with prayer. And so yep. I'm going to ask you just to pray. Would you do that? Just... Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Father God, we pause right now. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for uh, just the passion that you have given me, have given Dan, have given coaches, have given teachers, have given community members, Lord. Lord, I just pray that your power and your encouragement and your unending love, God, would lead us 
in reaching these students for you. Lord, I know it's just one student at a time, Lord, and I just pray that as we reach that one student at a time, Lord, that that would continue on and multiply by the hundreds, Lord. Lord, we know that you are a faithful God. We know that you are a loving God. We know that you hear our prayers. You ask us to come to you, Lord, and right now we are coming to you, asking that you would give us the strength, God, to, to be obedient to you and to follow, God, your leading in our lives, God. Thank you for Dan. Thank you for this ministry, Lord. And I just pray just a covering over our evening and just a blessing uh, over this organization, God, as they continue to, to reach the young people in our state. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Well, John, thanks so much for being a part of uh, Campus Ignite. And uh, I've told you a little bit about uh, the app that we have. Yep. How do you see that possibly being effective in the world that you're in part of? Yeah, I think the more people we can kind of connect with and, and share this element with them, share our vision, share our heart, um, show them your heart, show them the, the passion of this organization, um, I think it's, it's, it's going to boom. I think we're going to see this massive following and it, it's going to be amazing it's going to be amazing so i thank you for the work that you're doing so you think building up an army of people on every campus that are praying people that are engaged people that are being mobilized uh, either through breakfast clubs or fca or different elements that are taking place on campus or just even connecting teachers would be a very valuable thing absolutely it's all about uniting becoming one one voice, serving one God. And, and that's what we have to do. We have to pull together this team of people and, and unite and just be strong. Well, John, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And uh, I pray that God will bless you as you begin to enter into your new season in the, in the tennis world and that you'll continue to be able to reach young people for the cause of Christ. 